So he was moving around in the sunlight a little bit and I was startled to just even see him out in the sunlight. And it looks like he's he's going into the bowl. Did he do that? That is just something that they were. Yeah. Are you using slug pellets in your garden or anything? It's organic, but... Is everybody around you? See, I'm not sure. It's September in the allotment garden and this morning I've been busy picking raspberries and pulling up carrots and all sorts and I'm going to get to that in a second. But as I was walking up here to the seat to make this video for you, I found someone, something rather, and it makes me feel really, really concerned. I'm going to get him out of his bucket just now, just for a very short period because I don't want him to get scared. You can just barely see him. It's a little hedgehog. Now recently I made a video about hedgehogs with Sandy from the Manx Hedgehog Conservation Society. And we as gardeners actually threaten hedgehogs more than any other person, more than drivers on the road. And I'm just gonna put him back in his bucket right now. Slug pellets are one of the number one killers of hedgehogs. And the fact that I found him here in the allotment and he's not doing well makes me wonder if it has something to do with that. So slug pellets, if a slug or snail comes into contact with one of the slug pellets and the hedgehog eats it, it will kill the hedgehog. So please do not use slug pellets. I'm back home now after driving the hedgehog to the vet. Calm down a bit. Uh, spoke with the vet about what could possibly be wrong with it and hopefully after a little bit of observation he'll be okay. She thinks that it, it might just be hypothermia. We had quite a bit of rain yesterday which is why my video in itself was late. It was just far too wet to even go outside to even think about it. So I'm just waiting for a phone call now to um, see how he's doing and to see if we can re-release him back into the allotment. That would be the best outcome and I'll keep you posted on that. Anyway, getting back to the point of this video, it's now autumn and I spent this morning in my allotment garden and uh, I hadn't been up there for a little bit, just been busy with work, you know how it goes. Spotted quite a few weeds but also plenty of things to pick. I picked raspberries this morning, turnips, which are amazing, roasted, radishes, some massive carrots, quite funny. The carrots that I planted or sowed from seed, they all grew really straight and some that uh, I planted from module grown carrots, they're all wonky, all wonky. I suspect that when you grow them in the modules, the little roots just touch the bottom of the module and they just crinkle up and do all kinds of weird contortions. Lots and lots of runner beans still picked those and I also I've got one amazingly huge pumpkin just one off of my plant and I've been keeping an eye on it. Everything is looking all right. It can use that extra cleanup and that is what I've got planned for it next week. So I'm going to do a massive allotment tidy up, get on top of those weeds, get on top of everything that's starting to kind of brown and wither away. But actually, here at home, I've been doing some projects that I think that you'll find more interesting. So first off, Christmas potatoes. If you've grown potatoes before, you'll know that you get your seed potatoes, which are little mini potatoes to grow from in the beginning part of the year. And then you go through the process of chitting them if you'd like, and then getting them in the ground in early spring. And then those potatoes will be ready in summertime for you to dig up and enjoy. If you keep some of those seed potatoes dormant all year long and plant them in August or September, then 14 weeks later, presto, you've got new potatoes in time for Christmas Day. If you haven't kept any of your potatoes dormant, you can also order them online. I ordered mine, they're Red Duke of Yorks, and uh, I've left a link down in the description from where, for where you can actually get them as well. Although if you want to plant Christmas potatoes, this is pretty much the last week you can get them in. In the States, it's a lot easier to get hold of them. I've had a look on Amazon, link down below as well, and there's a lot of variety over there. What I've done is I have this tub here, and some time ago it got a crack in the bottom, which isn't so great for holding water in, but perfect for drainage. 
So I have filled the bottom with about four inches of homemade compost and that's compost I made in a new composter that I've been trialing and quite happy with that. Very compact, spinny thing that you can actually put by your kitchen door if you'd like. On top of that compost, I put two seed potatoes, covered it with four inches more compost, put two more potatoes on top, covered it again, and then have watered it. So I'll be keeping an eye on this, and with it being inside the greenhouse, it'll be protected from frost, potential snow, and I know that my greenhouse will stay warm-ish because it's situated right here next to the house and the conservatory as well. I've never seen frost in here, touch wood. <laughs> So over here, next to the, the potatoes, I have my greens and I've just been growing them in shallow boxes this year. I, I had some lettuce in the allotment garden, but I'll tell you what, having greens right at home makes them so much easier to go out and just pick for dinner. So no thinking ahead, you have it freshly cut and, and within minutes of picking it, you've got it in, the, in your salad bowl. And I have some new greens started up here and as long as it stays mild and uh, relatively warm I'll be able to grow greens all winter long and you can too. Now in front of me these are my onion sets so just like potatoes you can grow onions from little tiny onions that are called sets. Putting them in the ground right now or putting them into their modules means that they'll be really slow to bolt next year and they'll have more of an opportunity to swell to a really big size. This was a mistake that I made this year. I planted my onion sets in the spring and they didn't achieve that size that I really wanted them to. So this year I'm making sure that I get them in the ground. And the reason that I have them in modules rather than out in my garden is that uh, the allotment gets very wet and boggy and windy in the winter. So keeping them in modules at home until springtime ensures that they'll grow um, and I can plant them out in the springtime. One thing that I have in abundance here in the greenhouse are green tomatoes. And they've ripened quite a bit later than I'd hoped this year. I think it's been a bit coolish this summer, but also I got the plants in relatively late. And so what I'm going to be doing is continuing to monitor them. I'm going to be pinching off any little tiny tomatoes because they're really just not going to have time to ripen, to even grow really. And there's no point in letting the plant focus attention on these when it can be focusing attention on ripening these. I'm also going to be pulling off any flowers as well. They're so optimistic, aren't they? Just putting these out. So this is Tigerella here in front and behind me I've got Shirley, some really big beautiful fruits over here. And in the worst case scenario there are things that you can do with green tomatoes. You can ripen them indoors so you can take the entire plant inside to ripen on the vine. You can also eat green tomatoes. You can make them into chutney, you can fry them up as fried green tomatoes. I've seen a cake recipe, all different sorts of recipes. So in the worst case scenario, we'll be eating lots of green tomatoes. And then in order, I, I've been planning ahead as well, in order to get my plants in earlier next year, I've propagated some tomato plants. It was so easy, one of the easiest things that I've ever propagated. So I took some growing shoots of these tomato plants and then dipped them in rooting hormone, popped them into terracotta pots, and look at this just a few weeks later and there are roots growing out of the pot already. So I'll be overwintering these inside the house, so in the conservatory where it's frost free, and then as soon as it starts getting warm again next spring, these will go back out here into the trough and uh, hopefully they'll have a head start for next year. I have a lot of things on the go up here on my potting bench and I won't get to them all. What I want to show you is something that I'm very excited about. So. You might know already that I'm a huge fan of alpine strawberries. I love strawberries in general, but alpine strawberries are great. They don't send out runners, so they're not troublesome like that, at least my variety, Golden Alexandria. The berries are all very small and just absolutely delicious, super sweet. They fruit from June until sometimes the middle of winter. There's always a few berries on my, my plants. So next year, I wanna grow a lot more. 
And in fact, I have the plan to plant up my two strawberry palette planters completely with alpine strawberries. Now, seeing that my plants, they don't send out runners, makes it a little bit complicated if I want to uh, grow my own. But what I have noticed is that fresh berries that drop onto the patio and find some purchase in the cracks of my pavement, they will actually start to grow. And I have rescued a couple of plants, including this little guy. I rescued this little guy from the pavement. He's doing really well in his little clay pot. And so it got me to thinking, could I grow alpine strawberries from fresh strawberries? And the answer is yes. So these two pots here in the front, they show, first of all, some compost filled with fresh berries that I've just squashed into the compost. And that was just a couple days ago. And then in this one, this is one that I, I planted up a few weeks ago. And look at all of those little baby strawberries. So they grow readily from fresh berries that you can just squeeze into compost. They were so easy. And if you're going to do this yourself, I would recommend probably doing it in, in spring or summer so that the plants have time over the warmer period to, to grow and flourish. But I'm going to keep an eye on these. I'm going to bring them inside as well. And hopefully in spring, I'll have, what is this? There's about 20 or 30 little plants in here right now for free. And I will be planting these up in my strawberry palette planters. So as you can see from my own garden and greenhouse, there's a lot more things that you could be doing right now that aren't necessarily raking up leaves and putting your gardens to bed for the winter. And uh, there's more details on growing Christmas potatoes and your onion sets, etc. over on Lovely Greens, the blog. And there'll be a link down in the description of this video. So head over there to find out more. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe. I put out videos every week and I focus mainly on organic gardening and DIY projects. And then also I will be giving an update on the hedgehog and that will be in probably in my community tab first of all. And then also uh, in the next video, I'll, I'll give a little bit of an update as well. And if you haven't checked out my community tab yet, so on my actual uh, channel page, there'll be a tab for community. And if you get notifications from me, then you'll see everything that I post up there. So pictures and, and uh, reminders and older videos that I think you might find interesting. So definitely check that out. And uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon here on Lovely Greens.